Um, thermal contact conductance at the interface of two one centimeter thick aluminum plates is measured to be 11,000 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Note that the thermal contact resistance is the inverse of the thermal contact conductance. The interfacial uh, contact area is one meter squared. The thermal conductivity of aluminum at room temperature is 237. Determine the thickness of the aluminum plate whose thermal resistance is equal to the thermal resistance of the interface between the plates. Okay, so what is happening here? We have these two fellas, you have these two aluminum plates, and we know that they will have a certain resistance, thermal resistance due to the, the, the conductance, right? So we know for these, for the heat to go from one to side to the other, it needs to go through all the atoms on the material, and therefore it will have a certain resistance here. And also this one same thing, right? Because of the conductance, we're gonna have a uh, thermal resistance associated to plate two. But just like we saw last week, the gap also has a certain resistance, right? There will be a certain resistance right here associated with this gap that there is between the two plates. And then what we're being asked is, if we were to, instead of have instead of having this uh, gap here, if we were to have a single aluminum slab that would substitute this gap, how thick should it be, right? So first thing we need to know is, okay, what is the thermal resistance of this fella here? What is this guy? So we don't know the thermal resistance, but we do know the conductivity, the conductance of this um, gap. And we were given that the conductance is 11,000 watts per meter square Kelvin. So if I take, this guy here and multiply by the area, I'm gonna get that number of 11,000 watts per Kelvin. And then the sentence on the problem pretty much tells us that the thermal contact resistance is the inverse of the thermal conductance. But it didn't really need to tell us that, right? Because you can just look at the unit, check out what's happening here. We have watts per Kelvin and we know that the resistance is all thermal resistance is, is given in Kelvin per watt. So pretty much what I can do is I can invert these two fellows here. So I can invert these guys here uh, to the minus one, not minus one to the minus one. And I would get 9.09 .09 times 10 to the minus five Kelvin per watts. Okay, and this will be the resistance of the interface or gap resistance or any name you want to call it. Okay, so the question then becomes, okay, well, if, I, if I'm not gonna have that gap anymore, instead I'm gonna have a single piece of aluminum that will substitute that gap, what has to be its thickness? And we know that if we have a single piece of aluminum like the one I drew here, uh, the resistance that that guy will have is due to conductance. And then we know that conduction, the thermal resistance of conduction is proportional to the distance that he needs to travel, the thermal conductivity and the area perpendicular to the direction of heat, right? The area in this case is this area just here that I painted in blue and it was given to us to be one meter squared, right? That's why I multiplied over here by one meter squared as well. So the question is asking if you, if this resistance is to be the same as the resistance that we had before, what has to be X? And just by looking at the equation, we can see that X will be the K times the area times the resistance of the gap, right? <clears throat> so that means that X will be a K for aluminum, which is 237. And that is watts per meters Kelvin times the area through which heat is traveling. That is one meter squared times the resistance of the gap, which is nine. Oops, 9.09 .09 times 10 to the minus five. And this guy here is given in Kelvin per watts. So unit wise, we have watts and watts, we have Kelvin and Kelvin, and we have meters and meters squared. So we're gonna be left with meters. And this turns out to be 0 0.0215 meters which is the same thing as 2.15 centimeters, right? So that is the solving of the question per se. We would we could stop here if we were simply solving this for the sake of solving it.
but we're solving it with the purpose of learning something. And what is that? Well, the purpose of solving this guy is that we're saying that we had originally two centimeters, right? We have one centimeter plate and another centimeter plate. And if I want to have only one block instead of two blocks, I would have to have a 4.15 centimeter thickness because it would be the one over there plus the one plus the 2.15, right? So if I were to have a single block like I have here, this guy has to be uh, 4.15 centimeters thick as opposed to the two centimeters of thickness. So it's actually uh, double, more than double the thickness that I had originally. And if you're building, uh, if you're in construction working, you're working in a building, if you can have a wall that is half as thick with the same thermal resistance, that's a win, right? So that's an idea that we can apply in a lot of engineering principles, and uh, sorry, in a lot of engineering designs and uh, products that we're trying to develop. So likewise, if we're um, trying to do, develop a thermal, like we are in this case for this unit, and we want to increase the thermal conductivity, uh, sorry, increase the thermal resistance, we can have small, several small layers instead of having a single material. Because by doing so, we're gonna, have, we're gonna be creating a um, thermal resistance due to the gap that we have between every single one of those materials. Likewise, if you guys did um, materials engineering, which is 205, you would have learned that when we're studying K1C and the resistance of materials, we can have several slabs that make up the same thickness of, of a single slab, and those several slabs are gonna have a greater resistance to a certain type of um, stress, right? So it's the same principle being applied here. So in spite of the math around this being quite simple, the idea behind it is quite important for us to absorb and understand and use in our favor as engineers. Likewise, you can think exactly the other way around, right? If we want to have a very good conductor, if I want to have a wire that's conducting electricity very well, what I need to do is make sure that I have as least gaps as I can. And if we zoom all the way into the material scale, into the uh, micro scale, we can think of those guys as defects in our lattice, right, into our crystal structure. So every one of those defects will be like one of these gaps that will be uh, stopping the conductance of heat or of, or of electricity in our solid. So that is the idea behind this question. Do you have any